So, I'm Sam Bown, and I'm here to talk to you about DOS attacks, and I've got some help in doing that. Which is very good. So, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the hacktivists that have used DOS attacks because I find them interesting and they have dramatized how much damage you can do with the various kinds of DOS attacks. Um, at the peril of going to prison themselves for it, which is a drag, but anyway, it helps the rest of us sell security appliances and it helps me entertain students and keep them interested in learning how these attacks and defenses work. So um, you will be participating as victims. Now how many people brought a device to get killed? One, two, three, yeah, not very many. Four of you over there. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. Okay, because uh, Ryan, who's setting up a wireless network, says he probably can't connect more than 40 or 50 before it'll crash, and I didn't think there'd be that many volunteers to get their device killed. However, I was trying in the speaker room, and I believe this attack could be used to kill every machine at DEF CON from here. I was going to demonstrate a version of that, the not so lethal on a stage, but it wouldn't connect at all in the prep room, so I decided to skip that for the moment. But if any of you were unscrupulous, you could try it. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. So that's me. I'm on Twitter. And I teach at City College, San Francisco. And I've got two guests with me. I've got Matthew Prince here, um, who's going to talk about his inside dealings with LulzSec, um, which I was very pleased to have. In fact, I met him because both of us were deplored as immoral, evil people helping LulzSec. Because I retweeted some LulzSec tweaks that pointed to stolen data, which I thought was important. And he ran a service which they used to protect themselves from attacks. And so it'll be interesting to hear about that. And Ryan here, way over there, he's going to set up the network and kill people who wish to volunteer to be dosed with this attack because we could learn some new vulnerabilities here. Now they're not zero days because this, the attack I'm using here, I didn't write it and it's not new. It's been known for a year. It's just that an awful lot of people that manufacture devices don't care and have not patched it. So if anybody has any exotic devices, it would be interesting to see if they're vulnerable. Anyway, here's the summary of what I want to show you. The DOS circus is about the history of this stuff and the attackers that have been using it, and then I'll talk about the three kinds of DOS. Layer 4 DOS, where you use thousands of attackers to bring down one machine, usually distributed denial of service. Uh, layer 7 DOS, where one attacker can bring down one server or more. And the link local IPv6, router advertisement attack. I talked to you last year about IPv6, and I said it was going to bring a lot of security problems, and so it has. Um, it's given us a time warp when a bunch of things designed in 1993 are now back on our networks so the old tricks work again. And this is not really an old trick, but it's devastating and I'll show it to you. You can kill all the Windows machines on a network from one attacker. And again, you only need a few packets per second to do it. So uh, Julian Assange stirred everybody up by leaking U.S. secrets and uh, he published this mysterious encrypted file as his insurance and if any he ever gets irritated enough at the fact that he's being held in house arrest and perhaps going to be deported and stuff, he can release the secret key and reveal something terrible not yet specified. But so this stirred up these anonymous people that had gotten tired of just posting pictures of cats on 4chan and decided to save the world through denial of service, which makes a lot of sense to them, although not to me. So they started attacking, if anybody they could all agree to hate, they would blow them away. So it started with Scientology because it's pretty easy to hate the Scientologists. And uh, <laughs> then it went on to other people and eventually H.B. Gary Federal. This guy couldn't, um, he was supposed to be here but he was issued a court order about three days ago forcing him to not speak at the panel and tell what really happened for the inside story here. But anyway, in order to publicize his new government security contracting company, um, Aaron Barr said that he could find the people running LulzSec and expose them by doing a correlation of social networking. So what appeared in Twitter, he would correlate with what appeared in Facebook and elsewhere. And so they decided to take him down. And it was extremely easy. They got a team of anonymous members. Now anonymous was a low-tech group, usually using really primitive tools, but a small number of them got together who were relatively skilled compared to the others. And they decided to take these guys down. They found a SQL injection and took over the email server. And then they sent emails pretending to come from the owner of the company asking him to please change the password, change the username, and turn off the firewall. Thanks. That's working now. <laughs> and once they were in, they took all their emails and dumped them on the web. Because the whole thing about these guys later became LulzSec, the whole point about them was complete irresponsibility. The fun thing is to take everything every sane person ever told you not to do and just do it. And then you laugh. Ha, 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 ha. So what would happen if I just dumped your whole email log out, everything personal, hurting who knows how many innocent people that just had something to say about their medical conditions? That would be a lot of fun, so that's what they did. And uh, they found a lot of real dirt in there. 
it looked like the, they were planning to do a lot of really nasty things from H.B. Gary. Um, and so then Anonymous decided to attack the Chamber of Commerce, having found out that they were involved in this with a Drupal exploit, again showing more intelligence technically than they, the Anonymous had, which mostly just used that low orbit ion cannon, which is pretty primitive. So the gesture gets in here. It is a demonstration of the power of a layer seven attack, although no one knows exactly what he does. His tool is secret, and I'm guessing what it does. But from people who have been attacked and kept logs of his packets, they've told me that I am correct, that what he's doing is essentially using a slow loris attack with some variations. And his plan here is to be right wing, essentially, where Anonymous and Lulzsec are left wing. He is pro-military, he comes from the military, and he tries to punch back at anybody that he regards as endangering soldiers like Julian Assange and Islamic Jihadist recruiting websites. And he brings them down with his tool and then tweets about it. He's prominent on social networking. You can go chat with him. I've chat with him. But he, but he doesn't have any partners, unlike Lulzsec. He works alone, and therefore he hasn't been caught yet. He understands military operational security. Nobody can betray him, something that Lulzsec forgot. Anyway, so he brought down WikiLeaks single-handedly and held it down for more than a day. And to prove it, I was chatting with him in IRC. And he said, OK, I'm going to turn off the attack and let it come back up. And it came back up. He said, now I'm taking it down again. And it went down again. So that convinced me that he was really in control of the attack. And uh, here's the Netcraft map of WikiLeaks going down for more than a day, thanks to the gesture. So um, that was his game. Then he decided to fight with Anonymous, because Anonymous didn't like him taking down WikiLeaks. And he's been focusing on them for about the last year, Anonymous and Lulzsec, uh, blasting each other apart with a variety of tricks, but among them, um, denial of service. And then the gesture got mad at Westboro Baptist. Now, these guys are also pretty easy to hate. I mean, uh, they have some ridiculous ha hatred of homosexuals. And then they also um, picket funerals. And they basically, their profit method seems to be to be annoying until someone finally punches them in the face and then sue. But the gesture decided to take him down, so he took down four websites with his tool, which he had ported to a cell phone. And from a single 3G cell phone, he says, he held down four websites for two months straight. And I don't doubt that, because I know I could do it, and any of my students could do it, and any of you can do it. If you just pay attention to this talk, it's not hard. The slow loris attack runs on Windows. It's not hard to do at all. And uh, that's how it goes. Now, Lulzsec continued on a rampage, hacking everybody in sight. At one point, they just opened up a telephone line, and you could call in, and they'd hack anybody you wanted. Um, they hacked US government, military, NATO, British government sites. They dumped the contents of the Booz Allen Hamilton database. When they dumped out the Arizona cops is when I got really mad, because um, that was real important. And they dumped out their names and their password hashes and the logins for all the emails. And when they dumped out the Booz Allen Hamilton password hashes, that struck me as outrageous. 150,000 password hashes. Half of them are cracked by the next day. So all the top military, their names and passwords are now out there where anybody can use them. I didn't think much of that. However, they also took down some games websites, which, seemed, which I didn't even notice, but it seemed to be what really caused trouble for them. Um, and they put up a website to announce all the stuff they took down and all their stolen data. And then hacked PBS and put up a silly thing. Um, and I was pretty irritated by that, too. I said, why would you hack PBS? Come on, guys. Um, and uh, anyway, now they've been caught. Largely, um, Ryan Cleary was one guy kind of on the periphery of LulzSec. They caught him in June, and shortly after that, they caught Tiflo, who was much more important to LulzSec. And just a couple days ago, they caught Topiary. So they really are just British teenagers, um, very messed up, hardly left their house. Uh, um, and their attitude of just taking down everything just for fun is um, a you know, it comes from just childish immaturity. You might wonder what makes them do this. They are just young and foolish, is why they think they can just take down every government website and just for fun. Anyway, by the way, they're supposed to be both here. They're both on Twitter claiming to be here. They said they were at the pool yesterday. The gesture said he was here, and Sabu said he was here. I kind of doubt it, but maybe they are. Who knows? Um, Sabu is the main LulzSec person still at large and widely assumed to be on the way down because his friends have already been arrested. And this is what always happens. After they get the first one, they will betray all the rest because they don't have much in the way of operational security. Anyway, the technical part of this is you have a layer 4 DDoS is the simplest kind of attack. Um, and this is what was used to take down uh, MasterCard and Visa. They couldn't take down Amazon this way. Uh, Anonymous tried this. This is a protest which involves many people. Um, so the reason it does is the tool they use is the low orbit ion cannon, which is just a network stress tester, and it doesn't do much harm. 
So it takes a lot of people to bring down a website this way. But with the participation of 3,000 or perhaps 30,000 attackers, the number is not entirely clear, they were able to hold down MasterCard for more than a day um, and many other sites. And this is the kind of attack that uh, Kaspersky was talking about when they interviewed him a while ago and asked him how many infected machines would it take to bring South Africa off the internet completely? Or so I'm not sure it's South Africa, some nation. And he said it would take uh, hundreds of thousands of infected machines to do that. And I know that's false. I know it would take one 3G cell phone. However, he's not thinking of that kind of attack. He's thinking of the layer four attacks where it takes thousands of machines to take down one target. And it's really nothing more than just pressing F5 in your browser, F5, F5, F5. If enough people do that, you get the slash dot effect. The page goes down. It is an allow service of a sort. It's just a very weak primitive one. The more powerful ones, one like the Solaris attack that Arsenic came up with a couple of years ago, and there were many uh, previous versions of the same thing. Here you do something smarter. Instead of sending a complete request to the web server and just sending a lot of complete requests to the web server so it has to work too hard to serve them all up, you send it something that will jam up the web server. Um, an HTTP GET request to get a page from a server looks like this. You have the layer two information and the layer three information and down here you've got the GET which is several lines of information. And if you just send part of the GET and you never send the rest of it, then the network assumes that you're on some kind of unreliable network and the packets have been fragmented. And so I've got the first half of it and the other half is still coming, so it waits for the other half. And that ties up incoming lines. And it's extremely powerful, and I'll show it to you here in a couple minutes. Um, that's the uh, slow loris will freeze all available incoming lines and all you need is about one packet per second and it stops an Apache server dead. Um, are you dead yet is another similar one, but it uses posts and it affects IIS. IIS is not affected by the Solaris attack with incomplete GET requests. But it is affected by incomplete post requests. Uh, there are other variations of it now. There's one using Keep Alive DOS that works. I tried that and it's somewhat effective. It's not as powerful as the Solaris attack, but it's another way to send um, requests that make the server do a lot of work. Uh, the gestures tool presumably uses one of these principles. It's, he calls it Xerxes. It is a graphical interface. Looks like it runs on Ubuntu Linux to me, but who knows. And then it has this attacker. One important thing about layer seven attacks is you can run them through an anonymizer so you don't go to prison. Um, the low orbit ion cannon does not enjoy this feature because it has to send a lot of traffic from you to the other end. If you try to run it through the Tor network, it'll just choke off your attack and it'll just bring down the Tor network because it's like a flamethrower. It burns everything between you and the target. Of that, the um, Slayer 7 attacks are like a guided missile. It just send a few packets that do no harm to anything, and when they get to the server, blam, the server becomes unavailable. So you can run it through an anonymizer which is what he does, which means that not only can they not find out where it's coming from, 